Here's a product I never thought would exist, AMD's Radeon RX 590. Sure, the card has been floating around the rumor mill for a while, but remember when an NVIDIA GeForce card based on Volta also was? Sometimes rumors just fall flat. And given that the Polaris architecture has already been stretched so much with the RX 500 series, I personally never expected to see an RX 590. As much as I never expected this product to exist though, it doesn't mean that it shouldn't. This is in effect a clock boosted product, but it's honestly a great clock boost, and does manage to separate the 590 from the 580 a good amount overall. AMD is suggesting pricing of 279 USD for its RX 590, which competes closest with Nvidia's GeForce GTX 1060, which has models available between 250 and 290 on Amazon. The RX 580 goes for about 250 on average, but can currently be found on sale for a mere 199 on Newegg, but more on that later. So how does AMD manage to crank an already nicely clocked RX 580 to 11 with another 200 or so megahertz? Well, the transition to 12 nanometer process sure can't hurt, and while that isn't likely the only reason for the boost, it makes me really want to see an RX Vega built on a smaller process. That tasty new 7 nanometer from TSMC that AMD has been trialing can't get here quickly enough. AMD handled full sampling for the RX 590, so I can only imagine that I was chosen to receive a Fatboy model for an obvious reason, and that has nothing to do with Harley Davidson. The reason for the card to be called Fatboy is because it takes up more than two slots, but only slightly. I personally do not think this is justified for a mid-range product, but I'm not going to judge when the GPU can hit 78 degrees with ease as is. Aside from the reminder that I need to cut some pounds, XFX's Fatboy can take advantage of Radeon Chill to run super quiet when the load is not that great, includes a back plate for improved heat dissipation, and has a dual BIOS for those who like to get crafty with their gear. The card is also said to be overclockable, but that's testing I skipped over since I had to catch up on 1080p benchmarks for this video. When PowerColor decided to leak the RX 590 a week before launch, its website reported on a 17% performance boost. The RX 590 is rated at 7.1 teraflops by AMD, which gives us about a 16% boost over the RX 580. Since 1080p testing hadn't been conducted at all since the last test machine overhaul a few months ago, the GTX 1060, 1070, RX 570, 580, and 590, as well as the Vega 56 were all tested with the latest driver at only that resolution. While 399.07 to 416.34 seems like a mammoth jump, it actually only represents two months of driver releases. A total of eight games are included in the current test suite. Some have appeared here before, while others make their first appearance. That includes Monster World Hunter, Fortnite, and F1 2018. I had planned to include Player Unknown's Battlegrounds as a ninth title here, but the results were too sporadic to inspire any sort of confidence. This video is going to be the last for this particular suite, as some games are now on the market that should be slipped in. Battlefield 1 will be replaced with Battlefield 5, and Rise of the Tomb Raider will be replaced by Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I may also drop Fortnite since there hasn't been too much demand for it, and it's actually a chore to benchmark. The higher the resolution in Battlefield 1, the smaller the gains the RX 590 will exhibit over the RX 580. At 1080p, AMD's latest GPU gains 7 FPS, which drops to a gain of 5 FPS at 1440p. As I analyze these results, I now realize that I didn't test the GTX 1060 in the higher resolutions, so I'm glad it's at least covered in the 1080p set. AMD really cleans house there, slotting the three RX cards right in between the 1060 and 1070. The RX 590 continues to leap ahead of the RX 580 by a fairly expected amount in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, again sitting in front of Nvidia's GTX 1060, and not at all far behind the GTX 1070. At 1440p, the RX 590 with our settings can handle about 50 frames per second, which isn't bad at all given the level of detail. However, that consists of a 40 frames per second minimum, which might be a bit low for your tastes. Fortunately, Mankind Divided offers a ton of tweaking ability, so you won't have a hard time getting that extra 10 FPS. In F1 2018, the GTX 1060 manages to overtake the RX 570 at 1080p, and again, the RX 590 slots in ahead of the RX 580 with a 7 FPS increase. While Mankind Divided had tight performance between the RX 590 and GTX 1070, the latter card clearly spreads its wings better here. The 7 FPS increases for the RX 590 at 1080p over the RX 580 seem to be rather consistent. Yet again, the GTX 1060 displaces the positioning of the RX 570, after which point the card scale is expected. To the surprise of no one I'm sure, the RX 590 can handle Fortnite just fine at 1080p, and 1440p for that matter. Though, if you're insistent on higher than 60 FPS in your online shooters, you can easily drop details level down and get an instant boost. Interestingly, this is the first test where the delta between the RX 580 and 590 is quite small, at a mere 3 frames per second. 
Due to the nature of an online game, it's difficult to get tight performance deltas from run to run. With mega popular games like these, it'd be nice if the developer could cough up a worthwhile in-game benchmark that actually allows true apples to apples testing. That said, Fortnite is actually pretty consistent, all things considered, whereas PUBG in my experience has been anything but. 20 frames per second deltas from run to run in that game were common, which is why it's not used in our lineup. That tangent aside, this is the first example of a title where Nvidia has some clear optimizations, as its 4.3 teraflops GTX 1060 outperformed the 7.1 teraflops RX 590. Likewise, the GTX 1070 outperformed the technically faster RX Vega 56. Monster Hunter World doesn't strike me as the most optimized PC game, but as mentioned in previous articles on the website, it scales as expected, and since an unoptimized game still represents current performance, it's still relevant. Here, the Radeon RX 590 jumps 5 frames per second ahead of the RX 580 at 1080p, while the GTX 1060 once again displaces the RX 570 for the second from bottom position. The beefier cards exhibit some huge strengths with Rise of the Tomb Raider, but at 1080p, all of the cards here deliver better than acceptable performance. At 1440p, no real compromises have to be made. At max detail, the RX 590 delivers a clean 60 frames per second on average. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands came out before Far Cry 5, but in many ways, I consider Wildlands to be the much more beautiful game. It's also one I suggest anyone who enjoys open world shooters dive into. There's a lot of content, and the game only gets better with friends and co-op. But I digress. At 1080p, all of the cards can handle this game without issue at max detail, with the RX 590 keeping comfortably ahead at 60 frames per second, and coming close to that for the minimum. Even 1440p performance is good, though I'd personally tweak something to inch a bit closer to 60 frames per second. While there were some shakeups in some of the game tests up to this point, the DirectX 11 3D Mark Firestrike test has shown the exact same kind of scaling between the GTX 1060, 1070, and RX 570 to 590 as we'd expect. According to 3D Mark, the RX 590 is about 10% faster than the RX 580. The same fact remains for the DirectX 12 Time Spy test. In the DX11 test, the GTX 1070 jumped 14% ahead of the RX 590, but in this DirectX 12 test, that increase jumps to 25%. Likewise, the GTX 1060, which fell behind the RX 570 in the DirectX 11 test, has reversed roles when the DirectX 12 won. Nvidia's Turing architecture extends that dominance to the top of the chart. In the Blue Room VR Mark test, which represents future VR workloads, the RX 590 struggled a bit. This is the first test outside of Fortnite where the GTX 1060 competes head-to-head -head with the RX 580. Clearly, this is an extremely tough workload, and the performance deltas are going to be small because of that. But clearly, Nvidia has an advantage with this test. And just look at that RX 550 result. With Unigen superposition, it seems like the only advantage a GPU will have is its own strength. The cards scale pretty much as I'd expect, outside of the RTX 2080 keeping far ahead of the rest. Whereas 3D Mark suggested a 10% performance gain in the DirectX 11 Firestrike test, Unigen settles on the same value for the 4K test, but sees a slight increase to 12% in the 1080p one. For its gain in performance, the RX 590 uses about 30 watts more than the RX 580. That's a bit of a jump, but it's not an unexpected one given the huge clock boost. That 30 watt increase is still less than the 40 watt jump AMD itself reports, so in that regard, we seem to be coming ahead. Not that power consumption is a massive issue, but it's almost painful to see the faster GTX 1070 use 96 watts less than the RX 590. There isn't too much I can say here that isn't obvious. The RX 590 is faster than an RX 580 as its huge 200MHz clock boost would suggest. What your purchase will likely ultimately boil down to is how much you want to spend and what kind of performance you're after. With a price tag of 279 I'd say the RX 590 is priced right, but there are some things to bear in mind. While the RX 590 currently retails for 279 the RX 580 is currently on sale for 199 over at Newegg, and has been found for the same over at Amazon. The timing of this sale is actually kind of crazy to me, because it would be difficult to recommend a $279 GPU that gives a 3-7 to frame per second boost over an RX 580 that currently costs 199 But it gets better, because the RX 570 and RX 580 qualify for the game bundle that launches alongside the RX 590. That means you can pick up an RX 580 right now for $200 and enjoy two of the three games in that bundle. It might be a weird way to look at free games, but if you were to buy them anyway, that'd make the card cost $80 based on the fact that the games cost $60 a piece. Two games in RX 580 for $199 sounds more tempting to me right now than three games in RX 590 for $279. The $199 pricing is dubbed a sale over at Newegg, so it's not going to last. 
Maybe there was no good time to put that card on sale, but really, for $199, the RX 580 is a steal, especially with two games. That said, you'll of course want to verify that your card purchase will qualify for this bundle. You can see full details of that in the description below. Ultimately, pricing is everything. You can scout out what gives you the best return on investment, or simply jump for the big gun of the Polaris world and get on with life. When all is said and done, I rate the RX 590 pretty much the same as the RX 580 in our expectations chart. It does offer a noticeable boost, but not enough to justify any changes. I debated on adding a star for the 1440p test, but at that point it matched the GTX 1070, when the reality is much different. If you have questions not covered here, please feel free to leave a comment. Overall, this is a good release from AMD, as much as it is an odd one. Still, more choice in the market is a great thing, and when AMD is offering a killer game bundle as it is doing, the launch becomes quite alluring. And that wraps things up here. As always, if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to help the channel out. While there's been a ton of workstation type content in recent months, we're going to be soon broadening out in order to get more videos out the door, so there's definitely a lot more to come. But for those who love workstation, don't worry, that coverage isn't going anywhere. So thank you again and catch you guys next time.